Richardson. I see Mr. Meesmer is uh, checking the code to see if we have a definition. I have it, I have it right here. <laughs> we, um, w our code does define the maximum number of pe unrelated people that can be in an individual living unit, but it doesn't say that one person has to have a unit unto themselves for it to be considered a living unit. So I'd like to move beyond that issue um, and get to maybe the, uh, the more basic issue here of uh, defining an assisted living unit uh, or assisted living facility. And I think it was Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name. I mean, I could call this building a hot dog stand, but that doesn't make it a hot dog stand. Um, what we have to look at here is not what it's called, whether it's called an Alzheimer's facility or a memory care facility or anything else. We have to look at uh, how it is organized and operates and what it really is. Um, and what it really is is a place where there are individual rooms where people live. This is not, uh, as some of the testimony suggested, a commercial facility in the sense that it's not retail or industrial or anything like that. It's a place where people live. It's their home. Some of them may live there for a few weeks. Some of them may live there for many years. And whatever that length of time is, it's their home. And during the time that's, that it is their home, they require some kinds of assistance. Now that kind of assistance may be getting dressed in the morning, or maybe they can dress themselves in the morning and they require some other kind of assistance. There are none of these definitions that say one kind of assistance re gets you the title of assisted living and another kind of assistance disqualifies you from that kind of uh, a facility. Um, people in many kinds of facilities get assistance with many kinds of activities in their life. Maybe they hire a housekeeper, maybe they, maybe they hire a gardener in, in their own home. Um, I think that it, it seems to me that our code is very clear that the conditional uses in this zone include assisted living, and it doesn't say what kind of assistance, mental, physical, or financial, and congregate care. Congregate care means that some of your um, needs are provided along with the other residents. Um, we have several um, assisted living facilities in Anacortes already that are not necessarily designed for people with dementia issues, and they eat in a common dining room, and they share recreational facilities, and they receive certain kinds of assistance depending on what kind of assistance they need. So I feel that staff was correct in saying that the assisted living and the uh, congregate care, which are clearly allowed to be considered as conditional uses, fall within the parameters of the kind of facility that is being proposed here. Now, that doesn't address a, a lot of these other issues that, that have come up, but strictly on the legal definition of do people live here in a setting where they have some congregate care and some assistance with their living, both of which are allowed clearly in our code, I think this falls within that and we should consider this uh, an acceptable conditional use as determined by the planning director. Mr. Mayor. 